Hey everyone, today we're looking at 5 Adobe alternatives for raw image editing. So very many people use Adobe products to edit their photography and software such as Lightroom and Photoshop are almost industry standard when it comes to editing raw files and JPEG images. But people are also quite frustrated by the policies and terms of the company and also their basic business operating model. If you're following the news, you might have seen recently that one such update to Terms basically said that they would have access to any of your content and they could access that automatically or manually at any time. And users were basically forced to accept these terms or they couldn't access their work or software. And a lot of people were also worried that this meant the information could be used to train Adobe's AI tools as well. I should say that since then Adobe have said that they're not using that information to train their AI, so take that however you want. But nevertheless, a lot of people have decided that they don't want to use Adobe anymore, they're cancelling their subscriptions and they want to look at other software alternatives. So today I thought we'd look at five alternatives to Adobe. Some are paid, some are free, but they will all edit raw images. So I've covered these before in other videos and I'm going to give an overview of each one now but I'll put a link up top to each one as we go through the video so if you want more detail you can go back and look at those videos but let's take a look at the first one now. So the first one is a piece of software that you may have and might not even realize it can edit raw images it's actually Apple Photos so okay you need to have a Mac to have this bundled but essentially if you do have a Mac you've got this bundled with your software for free. And it does have some really good editing tools. They're quite hidden, but once you've found them, you've got some really useful sliders, which are quite similar to how Lightroom work, and you can actually get some pretty good results with your raw images. Some things that are not so good are the denoise tools, and the retouched tools are not great. Also, you don't have selective editing tools, but you do get the inbuilt cataloging features, which are probably the, the main features of this software. And overall, it's a very good piece of software, so if you want more information, check out my video. I've put a link up top already, and there will also be some links in the comments below. So next up is another free option, and it's Darktable. So I have made a video on this before. I'm not particularly experienced with it because it's so massive. It's such a huge program and has so many features. It does include cataloging, and it does have some selective editing tools, which is good. But I have found that it can run quite slowly, unless you know how to tweak the options to make it run with your graphics card and processor, etc. It does have a really overwhelming interface, like I said, but it is very comprehensive, and if you can get your head around how it works, some people say that it's actually even better than Lightroom. So another alternative is Affinity. This is not a free option, but it is a one-time fee and it's nowhere near as expensive as Adobe software. The screen capture that you see now is from the original Affinity, but Affinity Photo 2 is available now and it might look a little bit different and also have different features. But basically you've got a developed persona, which is used for raw editing. It is very good, you've got some options in there that are similar to Lightroom with the sliders. You can play around with a lot of the tone options and colour options. And it does have some selective editing tools. They're not quite as good as Lightroom, or at least in the original Affinity they weren't, but they are still very good. Once you've done editing in the RAW, you can bring that into the Photo Persona, and with that you can manipulate your images in a similar way to Photoshop. So you've got a kind of Lightroom and Photoshop alternative all rolled into one. Luminar Neo is a piece of software which markets itself around its AI features. It does have cataloging features, which is good. It's got selective masking and also AI masking, so you can do automatic sky selections, mountains, water, people selection, that kind of stuff. And its other AI features are very good too, such as sky replacement, for example. It's less technical than some other pieces of software, such as Darktable, and that makes it good for beginners. But for people who want to get into the finer detail, it can be a little bit more difficult to get that granular control of your image. It's got good retouch and removal tools 
And this is not a free piece of software, but again, it's not as pricey as Adobe. So uh, I think this is not as good as some of the other tools when it comes to just general raw editing. But if you want those AI features and quick, easy tools to change things in your image, it can be a really good option. Finally, we've got Raw Therapy, which is a free tool again. It's very powerful, it's got a lot of options, a bit like Darktable, can be difficult to get your head around at first. But once you have got your head around those tools, you've got a lot of fine control over the parameters in your image. There's no selective editing, but it does have a grad filter, which kind of lets you change the, the sky, for example, you can just darken the sky. So in that sense, you've got a little bit of selective editing, but by and large, it doesn't have the tools that Lightroom does. It does include cataloging, but again, not quite as comprehensive as the tools in Lightroom. And overall, I'd say it's a very good tool, especially considering it's free, but perhaps it's just a little bit more of a learning curve compared to something like Lightroom. So that's five image editing tools, which are an alternative to Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom that are either free or much cheaper than the Adobe equivalents. This is not a full list. There are definitely other tools out there which will edit raw images or JPEGs. So if you've got your favorites and I haven't covered them here, just put them down in the comments below and hopefully people can learn about those too. But that's about it for this video. So a huge thank you for watching. If you have found the video useful in any way or you've enjoyed the video, please just give me a thumbs up down below. That really helps out with the algorithm, gets the video spread a bit more widely on YouTube. That's great for my channel, but it also means that more people can benefit from these tips. And if you're a regular viewer, thank you for that. But if you're new to the channel and you're not yet subscribed and you'd like to do so, you can just click down there on the big red button or over here on this picture of me. And that way you'll stay up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week there's a new video every Sunday morning at 10am UK time. So I hope you'll join me next week for the next one. But until then, thanks a lot everyone, and bye for now.